Good morning. There was a lot of interest in my video about studying the King James Bible, so I thought I'd follow it up by answering at least some questions that get asked about this Bible. I'm not saying I know it all, but hopefully this will help you. We've already seen that the Old English used in the King James Version was declared obsolete some 300 years before the translation was done, and so there were good reasons that this was chosen as the language. One very big reason regards the pronoun you which could be either singular or plural in today's English. But in the King James Bible, whenever you use ye, that is Y-E, this is always plural. And the T-H beginning, such as in thou, thy, thee, or thine, that is always singular. One very great example of this is found in John 3, 7, when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus and he says, Marvel not that I say unto thee that ye must be born again. So the the means Nicodemus, the ye means everyone. Otherwise it would sound like, marvel not that I say unto you that you must be born again. That would be like just saying you Nicodemus, but no, this differentiates between Nicodemus and saying that everyone must be born again. Secondly, whenever a translation is done, words must be added to make sense of meaning from one language to another. And no one disputes this. But the King James openly italicizes the words which were added. Very honest. It also identifies each verse separately, while revised versions group them together, and sometimes verses may disappear, but you never know it. Once in a while, they'll have uh, a little blurb like in the, in the center, a little asterisk or something, but sometimes they're, they're just gone. A third, benefit, a third benefit to the King James Bible, that is, as far as I know, this is the only translation that didn't begin in the minds of the translators. The idea for this was suggested to the king by an outside party, and then the king appointed the translators their tasks. In addition to these first 54, sharing with other experts outside their committee was greatly encouraged. There is a list, there is a list of six English Bibles that led up to the King James that all came from the same reliable manuscripts. But the Geneva Bible was the one primarily in use before the King James and was used for about 100 years. It's said that the King James Bible is actually about 95% the Geneva Bible. But the King James work goal was finally to have just one more exact copy of the Bible for use in all Christian churches. Because there was still this group of six Bibles that was out there and they wanted their church to be in unity and especially with the threat of Rome, uh, both spiritually and physically. Now, the first King James Bible used included, uh, printed rather, I'm sorry, included the Apocrypha, which, is, which was listed between the Old Testament and New Testament as history, but not as inspired word of God. This was Jesuit scholars. There were several Je Jesuit scholars on the translation committee, and on behalf of Rome, with subtlety, they managed to slip it in there. They had wanted originally to change some of the manuscripts, but there were guards posted at the table that prohibited them from doing this. King James had some smarts about who his enemy was, but they convinced the committee to accept the Apocrypha in between the Old and New Testaments because the Apocrypha is actually listed as Old Testament in the Catholic Bible. So they hoped that this would uh, draw the Protestant church back to Rome one of those things that would draw back in unity because they wanted them in submission to that. However, later, uh, a couple of these Jesuits were soundly converted to real Christian faith. They told the others what they had done and the changes were made and they removed the Apocrypha altogether. So, so there are some that accuse the King James of having many changes. So here are your answers for that. That there were four editions of the King James Bible, but there are no new translations. They are not translation changes like you find in the hundreds of versions out there. There are some 783,137 words in the King James Bible, but there are only 421 what are considered true changes. 421 is like five-tenths of one percent of the entirety, so that is really small. But these changes that are there represent printing errors and changes in word spelling. They do not represent new translations. We have to remember that the English language only received its standardized spelling in the year 1750. 
So before then, the Bibles that were printed could actually have several different ways to spell a word, and it would be perfectly all right. For example, the word sin, S-I-N, might have been spelled S-I-N-N-E. It was still pronounced sin, and it still meant sin, but it's a change. If somebody wants to say it's a change, it's not considered a true change. All right. The other big change that happened was the original King James was printed in Gothic font. It was still English, but it was a different font from the Roman type we use today. And the Gothic font looks very different than the Roman type. So I just wanted you to know some of these changes that had happened and protests you may hear. There are many critics and doubters of the King James Bible, but hopefully this will help you to answer at least some of the questions and protests. And I hope you have a good day in the Lord. May God bless.